This exercise will be about important sampling and how to use important sampling with an exponential change of measure to simulate the probability of ruin. Now, if you attended Jeffrey's lecture on the subject, then uh, you can actually just skip this video. Uh, but I thought that it, it might be good to just uh, re review the um, random walk representation of a kramer lundberg process and also just talk a little bit about the motivation behind uh, important sampling here um, before we start the actual solution of the exercise. So uh, in the exercise text, we are asked to consider the random walk representation of a kramer lundberg process. So we're asked to consider the random walk representation of a kramer lundberg process. Now, at, at this point of the course, you, you, you all know what a kramer lundberg process is and uh, the definition of the model behind it. Uh, however, there are always infinitely many creative ways of describing it. So the random walk representation is a way of describing the kramer lundberg process in terms of how it changes between two jumps. So if you consider what I've drawn here, uh, which is a graph of the capital growth, um, then what the random walk representation does is uh, we go in and we consider the difference between the capital growth at this time point and this time point. And we consider the, the difference uh, in the capital growth from this point to this point. So we consider how much our capital changes between two jumps. And that change is then denoted by zi. So we let zi denote the change in capital between two jumps in capital between the i minus first and ith jump. So an expression for this would be, well, first to consider how much premium is earned between these two jumps, and that is c multiplied by tau i, where c denotes the premium rate, and then we subtract the claim which is paid out, which is the ith claim size. So this is the expression for the change in capital between two jumps. And due to the strong Markov property of the kramer lundberg process, these uh, changes are all IID distributed uh, with some distribution, let's just say mu. So let me just write up our model here on the side. We have the inter-arrival times tau i, which are exponentially distributed with parameter lambda due to this being the kramer lundberg process. And then we have the claim sizes y, which are iid distributed with some distribution, let's just say g. And we have the premium c, and the z's just uh, they then denote the change in the kramer lundberg process from one time point to the next. Okay, so what we want to do in this exercise is we want to simulate so our goal is to try and simulate the ruin probability. And we will first start by describing the ruin probability in terms of these zi's here. So one of the first things that we know is that if we consider the sum of these changes, so 
this change plus this change plus this change, then you can actually use that sum to determine when ruin occurs. Note that if we define Sn as the sum of Z1, Z2, and so on up until Zn, then we can describe the probability of ruin as the probability that Sn goes below minus u. So the probability that the change in capital from time zero up until the nth jump, uh, that that change in capital uh, eats up the entire initial capital for some n in the natural numbers. So this is one way that we can describe the probability of ruin. Uh, therefore, one may uh, uh, one one might think uh, that we can simulate the probability of ruin by simulating these essence. or uh, more specifically by considering the mean value of the indicator of this event because what we know is the probability of an event is equal to the mean value of the indicator of that event so by trying to simulate the mean value of the indicator that Sn is smaller than minus u for some n in the naturals. So you might think, well, then what we can just do is we can simulate a lot of these indicators and take the average of them. However, this simulation of the indicator will turn out to be problematic. And the reason it will turn out to be problematic is you want to simulate sample paths of this kramer lundberg process, uh, where in some sample paths you obtain ruin and then your indicator attains the value 1, and in other sample paths you do not obtain ruin, where your indicator will then be 0. And ideally you can then sum the zeros and 1s and take the average of them, and then you get an estimate for the ruin probability. However, the problem with this is, well, if you want this indicator to be zero, you need a sample path that is infinitely long where you can guarantee that ruin does not occur. And that is not something that is possible to achieve just using uh, naive simulation because that would actually require that uh, you simulate infinitely many of these uh, increments uh, of these jumps before you can obtain an indicator value equal to zero. So that is not a very nice way to go about things. So how do we then simulate um, the ruin probability? Well, <clears throat> that is what we will address in this exercise, because what we will do is instead of simulating these SNs, we will simulate something slightly different, which we can relate to this expression, where that slightly different thing that we simulate will be sufficiently nice so that it is actually possible to uh, simulate it using infinitely, uh, using finitely many uh, simulations. So that is what we're going to do. And more specifically, we're actually going to consider each of these jumps z, and uh, we're going to shift them using an exponential change of measure, uh, and then consider how to estimate the ruin probability using these shifted z's. Um, yeah, so that was basically just a, a quick motivational speech on why we're going to do this exercise. And uh, in the next uh, video, we're going to start out on the solutions.